Hey Tech here, so welcome to the VRTech channel. So Neox sent over the top of the line Pimax AKX, the ultra high total number of pixel and resolution VR headset from Pimax with also their new SOAR controllers. And of course that's the headset with an ultra wide field of view of 200 degrees diagonal. And that's big. I tried the 5K, 5K OLED, 8K, 8K Plus and Vision 8K in the past. Oh, that was a mouthful. But I never had this one in my hands and of course on my face. So let's take this opportunity to rediscover together the Pimax headset, controllers and of course ecosystem. Did it get any better? Let's get into it. And well, these are the boxes of the full kit for the Pimax AKX. Let's get through them one by one. They're pretty straightforward though. In the first one you're gonna find the Lighthouses 2.0 from Valve. These are of course going to be used for the tracking of the headset and the controllers for a full room scale experience. I already have them in the corners of my studio, so yeah, they're gonna stay in there. Well, let's fix the box up again, because I'm gonna have to send it back after these. The second box is in there, the new controllers, the Pimax Sword. By the way, the Pimax sets are compatible with the Steam 1.02.0 series position and controller. That means that you can use it with the index controllers or even with the Vive Wands if you feel retro. But Pimax decided to design their own controllers and here we have them. They come with two batteries in the box and the USB Type-C cables to charge them. These batteries are weirdly for some Sony cameras, all right? For this controller, Pimax took inspiration from everything out there. They have the trackpad of the wipe wand, the shape and feel of the meta controllers and the tracking and cool grip fit of the index controller. They look like a weird mashup, but they feel pretty good in the ends and the tracking ring, even if it's pretty big, shouldn't get in the way much. The triggers and grips have a nice feel to them and also a click at the end. I'm very curious to try them in game. But of course, let's get to the big box because in there we're gonna find the headset. Here we are with the Pimax 8KX in all its glory with a comfy looking and optimized ergonomic design strap with integrated audio and the cable with two USB and one display port already attached and ready. The headset has a rubbery feel to it and cool silver details with a power button and the volume rocker on top. Headphone jacks for the strap audio, the IPD adjustment wheel on the right that move the lenses in a range from 60 mm to a maximum interpopulary distance of 70 mm plus 2 mm by software, comes with two face cushions thick one and a slim one in the box. And yeah, these are the well-known massive custom-made lenses able to give an ultra-wide 200 degrees FOV and hide behind the two low persistence LCD displays with a resolution of 3840 by 2160 pixels per eye, running in 60, 75 or 90 Hz in native mode, so using the full resolution with the option of an upscaling mode of 110 Hz. Oh, and of course we also have the USB Type-C on the bottom and on the top for the optional accessories. But hey, it's time to connect it and play it a bit, right? The setup is pretty straightforward using SteamVR and Pidal, that is own custom software, and that didn't change much from the last time I used it. The amount of settings available is always staggering and kind of overwhelming, because this is not the usual plug and play virtual reality headset. I mean, you could do it if you want, but you easily find yourself moving sliders left and right, pushing buttons and everything to find a way to display the games in the best way possible and as you want. Yeah, because there's a crazy high number of adjustable screen parameters, many of which I don't personally understand. The Pimax AKX is more of a top of the line prosumer headset aiming to have the best immersion, resolution and everything possible to try to give the best Pimax experience with it. But in all, I have to say that the strap feels very comfy, the padding are squishy and the weight distribution is pretty good. Even if you can see how large it is, it feels and looks very similar to the one of the Vive Pro. I had the deluxe audio strap on mine and I have to say that this is really a level above it. The one I receive is what they call the d mass strap, but there's also an option on the other strap with index-like audio speakers on the side with a different weird name. The audio is pretty good, but of course you don't have much of a privacy using it. But you will always have the option to use your headphones and the shape of this strap doesn't get in the way. And that's pretty cool. But putting it on, oh my, oh my, I forgot how wide the FOV really 
fills in here. As always, you have four options. There's the large one, the medium one, the small one, and the potato one. And these options are actually very useful in base of the GPU that you have. Because of course, the widest option will use a lot of your computing power of your graphic card. And with this resolution, that's no joke. As I said here, I have the Vision AK with some dust on it, with an older display with the same screen resolution. The problem with that is that we received an upscale image through the cable, and it wasn't able to use the panel to its fullest. With this instead, my 2080 Ti is actually screaming. But in change, you can get much better image reproduction. The games are clear and crispy, and the two full 4K displays really show their muscles. Maybe it's for the resolution, but actually I had less eye strain with this model instead of the older one. Usually with the Pimax headsets, my right eye started to hurt pretty early on instead with this one. So far, it's not happening. And that's a good sign, I guess. Just be aware though, that if you don't have a super high-end system, this will put your PC on its knees. Like really. Having a wide FOV for sure makes a big statement in immersion. The image is not the clearest on the side, but let's remember that the eye resolution of your eyes in its own fovea and it's around the 10 degrees central view. So it feels really great in driving and flight simulator for the sense of speed it can bring. 200 degrees means that it's pretty much double of every other VR headset in commerce and it's still unique for this feature. I really forgot how cool, different and weird it felt. And finally, with this resolution, doesn't really feel like a trade-off. Granted, you have the power to run it at the FOV. The controller, though, I kind of uh, hit and miss. While they look pretty good to my eyes, also thanks to the LED in the front, that is very Pimax, if you ask me. Unfortunately, in game, they feel like an improved Vive One instead of a next generation controller. The games are usually gonna see them as Vive Ones, and while that's okay for functionalities, they don't have the same button possibilities of the competition. Most of the games still support the ones, so you shouldn't have any problem playing games, but I can't really understand the move of putting just trackpads and very few buttons on them. Luckily, the community is great creating profiles on Steam Input because, yeah, you're gonna rely on them a lot. Again, though, the buttons are clicky, the controllers are ergonomic, and I really like this weird design. But yeah, uh, they're kind of a letdown using them at the end. Overall, going back to Pimax was a very illuminating experience. While the FOV is not the most important thing in VR, for me, for sure, it makes a big statement. And I really appreciate the effort Pimax is putting in showing it to the market. While Pytool, the front end, remained pretty much the same, the new Pi experience bring a new dashboard and new functionalities. So you can finally change them also in VR. It doesn't look the best in terms of design, but its functionalities are very good if you want to access a stuff of options available to you. As a whole, I really enjoy using it with simulators in this period, but I always felt needing more in terms of power from my PC to actually run it, properly at least. This is why this is not the classic, usual consumer headset. This is made for people that want more, they want the FOV and want few compromises. With the best tracking on the market, with the Lighthouses 2.0, great comfort, huge FOV and very high resolution. It's made for people who love tinkering with their PC, seeking for the best settings every time, and they want to feel like they have control of the technology they actually own. And Pimax is one of the few companies that gives you the freedom. Do you think this is something for you though? So far I enjoyed to have the possibility to go back to the Pimax ecosystem for a while and rediscover it once more. Unfortunately, and as I said at the beginning, I'm gonna have to return it to them, but I'll keep keeping an eye on their future products that are arriving kind of soon. The Pimax 8K X kit goes for $1,699 now on Newegg and includes everything we saw in this video. For sure a prosumer VR headset. Yeah, so far though, thanks to Newegg for sponsoring this video and to make this possible. And of course, be sure to check out the website this December. During the Christmas season, Newegg has a lot of exciting discounts and promotions, also on PCs. That for sure you will need with this headset. Phones, accessories, and everything tech. So remember to take a look in the link in the description below and get your favorite products on Newegg. So far though, this is all. This wasn't really a review, but just me rediscovering and retrying again the Pimax ecosystem. And uh, yeah, this is a very expensive headset. If you are willing to pay that for a very wide FOV and high resolution, and you of course have the PC powerful enough to actually handle it, well, well, take a look at it. For me, with the 2080 Ti, that this was a pretty high-end system two years ago, 
Well, it's hard to run, let's be honest. Just unexpected smoothest of the experience. We're still talking about Pimax at the end of the day. So I still found some glitches here and there that I don't really know if it was for my PC or the headset itself. So yeah, your mileage may vary. But anyway, guys, let me know what you think about it in the comment below. And if you liked the video, like. If you did like the video, dislike. Subscribe to the channel for more VR tech. If you really love the channel, there's a join button there. A little bit further, also the Patreon. Thanks to all the patrons and who join the channel, of course. And I think it's done. So like, dislike, subscribe. I see you guys next video. Thanks for watching. Ciao and happy holidays, of course.